Hi everyone, I just wanted to make a short tutorial for you guys on how to color your own items uh, in Dungeon Defenders. Just this is for people who want to play around with them. This isn't anything permanent, but you can use this to modify stuff for your open file. You can actually modify anything and convert it back. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find our Dungeon Defenders on Steam. So go to your local C drive, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Dungeon Defenders. From here we're going to go into the Binaries folder and then Windows 32. Now you're going to scroll down a bit until you see dundefheroes.dun as a file. And then you'll also notice there's one that's the exact same but has a .dev at the end. So this is your open and local play file. This is your file for open and local. And then here is the file that we'll be modifying. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy this file and then you're going to paste it somewhere else in a different folder and you're going to add the .dev to the end of it and then you're going to replace this .dev with it. So basically that way this .dev you want it to be a copy of that. Uh, that way your open file or whatever you want to call it uh, is can be modified and later we're going to go and take this file and turn it back into the regular .done without the dev so that you can actually load that up and open. So anyways from here what we're going to do is going to look for an application called dundef development. So we're going to open that up and this is what we're going to be using to do all of our mod. Now notice this, this program is quite separate from the game itself. It's just going to give us an online, uh, or sorry an offline mode only so it worked just fine. And for some reason it's taking a lot longer to load than usual. I guess just because I'm doing a video it wants to take longer. <laughs> No surprise. Now we're just going to be using basic console commands to edit items that are on the floor. So we're not really doing anything that's extremely fancy. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find the item that you want to modify. So in my case, I want to modify the colors of an accessory. I can also change the stats if I want. But I'm just going to deal with the colors for now. And I'm going to kind of outline the basics of what else you can do. Uh, in addition, oh, that's not a good place for it to be, to be hard to modify. So you want to drop it somewhere where it's going to be, you know, you can't accidentally put it on another item I was looking for. Okay, so what we're going to do is, as we're looking at the item, I'm going to bring up our uh, chat bar at the bottom, and then you're going to type set equipment, uh, equipment, and you'll notice there's a whole bunch of options. You can use your arrow keys to scroll through all of them. So you can do uh, set the name, set if it's sellable, droppable, level requirements, the hero stat value, uh, stat, if you do hero stat value, um, there's different things, equipment stat value, quality index, swing speed, can't be sold, draw scale, draw scale lets it be, you know, potentially really big I guess, but accessories don't seem to work too well with that. Uh, max level description, secondary color, and primary color. So this is the two I want to be using right now is primary and secondary color because right now that's what I want to modify is the color. So I'm going to do primary color and now it asks for red, green, and blue values as a float. Uh, you can't use zero, that'll just set it to whatever the default color was. And then if you use negative numbers that's basically black and then it goes really weird as you go really negative. And then if you use positive numbers, anything up until 1 is a regular color, anything above 1 starts to get a kind of a glow, starts to get a glowing aura. So if you use like a thousand, it's going to glow extremely bright, have this bright aura, and it's kind of hard to see the item. But So you want to use something that's usually a little more moderate, like anywhere between 10 and a couple hundred. So in case for this one, it uh, looks like as if I want to do a royal blue. Now a royal blue can't just type in royal blue sadly. What we've got to do is figure out the combination. So you can look this up online, RGB values uh, for different colors. So I'm just going to try and guess at this one a little bit. So I'm going to guess that uh, it's going to use a little bit of red and green just to make it. Um, uh, and then we're going to use mainly blue. So and a royal blue is kind of darker so I don't want these values to be too high. So 0 0.4 let's try. And let's drop a Gladius, and we'll show you just a couple other things. Um, oops. So equipment, and let's say we want to go Forger primary. Forger would set the Forge by name, which is kind of nice. Uh, description sets the description max level, minimum cell worth, draw scale. And, oh, draw scale. Let's, yeah, I do actually want that. It's so much fun. Whoa. Okay, maybe not. Let's maybe not go so ambitious. Just go three. Okay, now let's go four. 
Okay, there we go. Now I'm happy. Okay, and equipment and that value. And then stat index can be quite... It can take a little bit of guesswork until you're used to it. Um, you know, to know exactly what stats what. So, you know, you can just try and do a little bit of guessing. That's exactly what I'm doing here. As you can see, that just modified the lightning uh, value. So, index 2. Say we want to have a lot of lightning value. Let's do 100. Whoa! Okay! That's cool, isn't it? 4, 100. Nope, nothing changed. 5, 100. Whoa! Just added another row there. Not sure exactly why nothing shows up though, but. Ah, there we go. Just found knockback. 5, 1, 2, 3. And another thing that's nice is you can actually use your arrow keys just to go around kind of like that. So I have no idea what stat number 7 is, but I, I don't think I saw anything change. There we go, stat number 8 is the block. Try 0. Ah, there's the attack. Stat 0. Okay, so there we go. We now have a ridiculously good Obsidian Gladys. So if I go and... Those are, those are important things, but as you can see, if you uh, just type in any letter, see that there's a lot of different options uh, you know like wow and the other thing you can do too you can only do this in here it's not super useful is you can spawn items but uh, let's say spawn ogre let's do it a distance of 20 and let's spawn 10 of them okay so there we go we now have a whole bunch of ogres in our tavern and uh, yeah it's kind of fun so we're gonna go back and we're gonna get on with the tutorial now. So what you can do now is you can take, uh, make sure that you back up your open save is my suggestion. So I'm gonna drag that to my desktop just so it's backed up. And then I'm gonna copy this one and I'm going to paste it. And it pasted it as a copy, but really what I wanna do is just change that back. So there we go, now it's done def heroes not done is what I wanted to see so that's good and now we're gonna open up the regular dungeon defenders and we're gonna see if it broke our game or if it works <laughs> of course these items would only be usable on open you can't do any of this on ranked so there we go we have our ginormous gladius still and we're able to use that on open now if we want, so it's pretty darn exciting. I'm just going to load up the game, make sure it still works. I'm sure it does, but... Oh yes, I got the tiny... Oh, and we get some extreme... We get some very negative DPS because we're doing so much damage, so... Yeah, oh man, just ridiculous amounts of damage. Too bad I didn't modify the attack damage on my classic, that would have been sweet. So anyways, there you guys go. Hopefully you uh, can have some fun just messing around with creating your own items for open, whatever you want. It's just a fun little thing that you can do. So until next time guys, keep having fun.